The work that we've been doing on this project, myself and Jose Christian uh, at the University of Brighton, is uh, it's based on uh, the apps industry and uh, the games industry, the digital games industry. In both these sectors, there's been a lot of promise that was made from 2008 onwards uh, about the potential for making money and the potential for bringing in new people, a new form of inclusive innovation, if you like, into this space. Partly because of uh, the new toolkits that are available that make it easier to make both apps and games. Um, partly because of the network, the effects of the internet and the fact that people can, uh, can disintermediate and publish their own content. Um, and also the availability of the App Store and so forth, and all these platforms that enable people to, to, to put out um, fairly small applications and, and pieces of work, products that will uh, be delivered through small devices, like smartphones, like tablets and so forth. This represented you know, a, new, a new kind of revolution, a new gold rush, if you could call it, for uh, these sectors. Unfortunately, what's happened is that the reality is not quite uh, as optimistic as, uh, as, as it was originally presented. While it's true that it's easy to enter into these sectors, for all those reasons, you now have a, an awful lot of content available on the App Store, on these platforms, and it's very difficult for new entrants to be discovered, to have their content discovered by consumers. Uh, very difficult to compete. Um, so that brings implications about how do you promote yourself, how do you do marketing, how do you get people to, to uh, really understand what your product is about and, uh, and to sell it. So what's become increasingly important is uh, community engagement in these sectors. So what we're hearing from our research, from the, the companies that we're doing case studies with, is that you really need to develop a community and bring it with you when you're going to, for example, a crowdfunding campaign like Kickstarter. Uh, for some months before uh, the release of a game, for example, you will find games developers who are sowing the seeds um, within a community on a, a platform like Steam, for example, and, uh, and really building up a momentum, building up buzz that can then be exploited when you do finally drop the game and launch it. So there's a lot of upfront work that needs to happen in terms of participation in these communities and to bring it with you into the product launch. In the app sector, we find it's, it's quite different in this respect in that you, you, know, you can uh, make a big hit from media exposure and then you can have a lot of downloads of your app um, uh, from, that, from a, a media hit that becomes a sort of viral effect. And uh, so what you typically find the dynamics in these sector is that uh, people then start to develop the community once they've had the initial launch. So that's an interesting distinction, I think, between the two, although there are similarities between uh, the two sectors. But, uh, so community engagement seems to be a, a key success factor. So in terms of the implications uh, for policy in particular and, and what we find in terms of practice, uh, I think there's, there's really like two areas that are particular barriers to growth uh, in these sectors. And the first one is around skills. We do find that companies are struggling to find uh, affordable, skilled individuals to work on both apps and games. Um, we had one example um, in, the, in the app industry where uh, a lady had, uh, it's based on marketing division uh, within London and outsources her, uh, her technical competence to Portugal. And we think that's an interesting model that we could explore in terms of policy implement implications uh, 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 throughout Europe, that we can think about trying to promote these kinds of collaborations for matching outsourcers and, and subcontractors uh, in areas where um, there are areas of skills gap with areas where you do have a higher availability of those types of technical skills. The second area is around uh, finance. It's difficult for these firms to find uh, access to finance. And uh, we think here it's important to recognize uh, some non-traditional indicators um, of value. 
which is what a lot of these companies do themselves, in that they, they're not necessarily looking at sales and revenues growth now, but what they're looking at is indicators like numbers of active users that they have. Do they have an access to a, a resource which is a large network of, uh, of a, a community which is engaging with their platform? And that represents you know, a real source of value as you look forward that you can start to think about selling advertising to and, uh, and uh, bringing with you into a, into a further product launch. So there needs to be some rethinking, I think, about um, indicators of value and uh, I think uh, bringing, updating, I think, some of the assumptions uh, in the digital era about what, what are the real indicators of value in this shift into more community-engaged, community-aligned sorts of uh, digital industries. Mm -hmm.